You are now listening to Project X X Cast podcast series. Good. Hello, Tony. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Bruno. Man, pleasure to uh, to be here in that. My pleasure to have you. Many people don't know this. Is actually, my first time speaking to you. So, essentially, I had an interview go. I'm a uh, I'm a presume what your pinnacle of your financial achievements are, which I presume I presume is your um, talent agency. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, so I own a company called Echelon Talent right now. Um, mm-hmm. The clues in the name, like it's Talent ID, um, and we manage the talent in uh, in football. Okay, I understood, I understood. And before we get to that in depth, we're going to go from the ground up. Okay, we're going to start um, from the ground up, your secondary school, if that's okay. From around the ages of, let's say, 13 to 15, how would you describe yourself in terms of your interests, motives, ambitions, all these kind of things? Honestly, uh, at them ages, um, I was going to Eyes and Zion School. My only interest and passion was football. Um, I wanted to play football. All I did was play football nine to five, and um, I only had dreams of playing professional football. Um, at them ages. You're a 13 and 15 year old son from those ages. If yeah. you could have an achievement or conversation with that person, would you have that conversation? And if so, what would you say? What would I say? Injuries, injury prevention, if I'm being honest and real with you. Um, I didn't actually get mm-hmm. to play football for as long as I wanted or reach the level that I wanted to reach because um, of yeah. the bag of things and the cliche um, answers, usually injuries. But I would tell myself um, to look after myself properly. Yeah, okay. And do you think you would have listened at that time or do you think you just would have brushed it off? Oh, that's a good question. Honestly, I don't know. I'd like to think I would have done because that's what I've tried to do in my life going forward, you know, after um, after school and after uni and when you become an adult, I've tried to listen to people that have been there and done that before me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the advice for the youth to listen, potentially listen to the people older because you may have been three more. Absolutely. I think that's the thing with the youth. So you always, when you're at them ages, you think that you know everything and no one else has done yeah. everything. Um, I mean, I talk to youngers now that uh, they grew up in the same streets, in the same areas that I grew up in, and they think what they're doing is new, and it's not. It's always been done. Mm-hmm. It's been done. That path has been paved. Mm-hmm. Those roads have been walked on already. Understood, understood. I'm more sure actually towards education, because you actually follow through with education um, up until you need to correct. Yeah, like my attitude towards education was literally following my passion and my dreams. Yeah. I went to uni because I, I, I couldn't get a contract playing pro football and university mm-hmm. was another path for me to one, continue to play football um, and two, study football. So the degree that I actually got was uh, sports management and football studies. So I'm a big advocate of uh, of higher education so long as it's in line with what your oh. your interests are and what your um, what your passions are. Understood, understood, because I had people with higher education for many of the years, it's just like a something not needed as many different avenues. So I'm surprised you actually advocate for that because, like I said, many people, they look at you as something just extra, something that we need, but you would say differently that it's something, if you're interested in, in it, then it's something that you should really push for. Yeah, like, for me, it's it's a grounding, right? And it's an education part of it, right? So if you want to be an actor, you're not just going to become an actor yeah. overnight or, you know, get scouted or think you're going to get it from Instagram or YouTube. Um, the majority yeah. of actors that are doing it have been studying it for a very, very long time and it's a graft. And by the time they get to where they want to be at, um, you know, they've they've been educated in it for a very, very long time. Understood, understood, understood. And I also hear at universities and networking is a, a big, big benefit at that time. Networking at university, am I correct? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest things I learned from university is, you know, how to adapt and um, deal with people from different backgrounds. As you can imagine, I'm yeah. from West London. I went to university as a fresh West London kid, talking West London, acting West London. Mm. And then when you meet a guy from Stirling, Scotland, who don't know what you're chatting about, you you learn quickly that, oh, he doesn't understand my vocabulary, you know, um, my mannerisms and all that kind of stuff. So it teaches you the ability to be able to adapt to different people um, and communicate effectively with them. Okay, so you see how networking with people is good. How would you classify the correct people that you should network with? Honestly, I think you should... Networking is also communicating, right? Meeting people. I think you should be able to uh, talk, meet, interact with as many different people as you can. Um, and through the course of conversation and time and experience with that person, um, you'll be able to get from it what is good for you or what's good for them. And, you know, I think you you got to be the judge of that. But to answer your question, I don't think there's one correct way in terms of networking. You can't look at people and be like, right, I'm not going to talk to this person because he has this or he can do that or he can do this. I think you just got to talk to people. When, when would you say you said you began your entrepreneurial journey? You'd say, what age would you say you said, hey, here's my business plan, let me try and advance it? That's another good question. You know, it's 
I think it for me it's just evolved um over time and experience and, and things like that. And the true nature of it is like one of my biggest heroes or inspirations is um the founder of Def Jam, Russell Simmons. He started Jeff Jam. If you if, if you if you know you like music and you like hip hop, you know that Def Jam pretty much without Def Jam record there probably wouldn't be like a modern day hip hop industry. And I read I read his book and listened to a couple of interviews. And one of the reasons why he started Def Jam is because they wouldn't let him in the door. And that's mm-hmm. kind of simple. Like it, It's similar to kind of probably my path as well. If you'd have asked me when I was young in my 20s, I would have worked for, you know, the big agencies, whether it's Wasserman, whoever. I would have loved to work for them, but they wouldn't let me in. That's what kind of inspired me to kind of do it myself. Okay. And is there any mistakes that you made in the first stage? Because I understand Echelon Tanner was a was and is a success right now. Was there any other business that people don't know about that actually didn't work out first time or what advice you'd have for the people that maybe put on the same route that you were taking that led to a safety and need? I don't know if it's a successful business, but I used to, in school, used to sell sweets. Um, I don't know if that was yeah, successful yeah. or not, but I would say that was probably my first dabble into, I suppose, entrepreneurship um, or doing your own business, you know, buying the penny sweets from, from the shop. Um, and selling them at lunchtime or after school for, you know, two pence or five okay. pence. <laughs> okay. And what do you think some mistakes that people make when they when they try to begin and start on a business? Common mistakes. Common mistakes is getting into a business that you maybe one, don't understand, or more importantly for me, two, have an actual passion in. Um, I mean, I'd, right. I'll give you an example. I, I, I know someone that wanted to start a cleaning business, all right? And my first yeah. question to him is like, what do you know about cleaning? And do you want, and two, do you even like cleaning? And the two answers to that was no. So I went, you might not want to be, um, you might not want to continue with that in terms of longevity. So I think one, like to answer your question, the biggest mistakes is people getting into businesses or starting starting that they don't really have a passion in or would do it for free. Understood, understood. So let's say you're creating a new business now. Yeah. And you're going through like the first few steps, like let's say step one, step two, step three. What's some very key points that you'd advise for the young people to, to have during this season? I think it's, you have to have a plan, especially for the first couple of years, I think. Um, you've got to know, years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you've got to have a plan. Why are you doing it? What are you doing it for? And where do you want to be in, you know, three years, four years, five years? And, and strategically work on those answers, all right? So what do you want to do? Work on that answer. And you have to come up with a, you know, coherent answer, um, that you are happy with. Understood, understood. And what would you say some of the pros and cons of having a, having a successful business? Because obviously the opposite of that would be having a normal 9 to 5. What would you say the pros and cons of having a successful business are in conjunction to a 9 to 5, for example? Obviously, the, like the, one of the main pros is being able to, one, work for yourself, um, employ who you want, and you know run the business how you want it to in terms of being told how to run it how you want it to based on your own experiences um also the time management you know so what you the time that you put in is what you're going to get out is the maximum result is what you're going to get out so if you want to work two hours a day you're probably going to get two hours a day of results out of it in the end of the day you know um Mm -hmm. so those are the kind of that's one of the pros for me is like i said it's your own time management what you put in um is what you get out uh, the, the cons, maybe. Sometimes you might not see your rewards imminently. You know, a lot of people these days, I suppose they um, they want to get into business to make millions upon millions upon millions to get a nice car or whatever. Um, but yeah. the cons of that that might not happen for the first uh, for the first few years. So it's about resilience and kind of sticking true to it. Understood. Understood. Since you've networked, I'm assuming you've networked people of similar status so far since you've had a business for a couple of years now, right? Yes. Is there any common characteristics you see in successful people, like, for example, early rising, or they only eat a certain amount of food, or they work for so-and-so, or they have this kind of attitude, or they're stern, or they're strict, or they're not strict? Like, have you seen any common characteristics between you and other successful people in the masses? I guess, for me, the main one is it's quite generic. It's probably, like, passion for something, you know? Um, mm. You've got to have a passion for something, and whether that's, you know, whether it's football, whether it's music, you have to have a passion for it, and you've got to be willing to do that thing for free for an extended period of time for it to be successful. And um, what are some of the challenges that you face in the beginning stages? Because many people, they see like, you know, the cars, the hotels, the, the teas with the mix of that. But is there ever a point in time you feel like, you know what, I just kind of feel to quit this and go normal? Because that's what some people think. They start for like maybe a year, two years, no results. 
let me just go back to something that's, you know, solidified and solid. So yeah. every time you have a thought to quit, or, yeah, go on, can you walk me through that to Like, when you start something, anything, like, whether it's business or anything else, it's, you're always going to face challenges. I think, for me, it was knocking on doors, trying to, you know, persuade football teams that, hey, this player's good and all that kind of stuff, you know? So getting your first deal over the line, uh, I would say, is because you, you come in as, you know, just Tony A. War. You're not coming from um, a WMG or uh, an octagon or anything like that. You're not coming from like a big agency with a reputable um, reputable organization. Um, you just come in right. with you, you know, with your opinion, your beliefs in in a certain player. So I think it's that's the first uh, the first tough bit really is the resilience, getting no's at the beginning, oh. getting no, 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 no oh. until you get your first yes. Understood, understood. I'm now to just double into the agency for just a touch. I want to talk about um, agents in general because it's common news. I'm sure you heard it as well that some footballers they trust the agents also, and they get you know, arm um, and leg taken from them or nothing in return. There's many famous footballers and stuff that play for teams such as Fulham end their career with a normal person's wage, even though they play for so and so years and they spend any kind of money. Yeah. But how would you say one person aspiring to be in professional sports how they can differentiate from a good agency, a good agent, and from someone that's just trying to you know, shake them essentially? I think like in any a uh, multi-billion pound industry like all over the world, there's always going to be someone who's going to take advantage, you know, uh, not necessarily just football and agents, you know, music agents, film agents, ev- all, every industry, there's going to be people that are going to look to uh, take advantage. So my, my advice is to find someone that, um, one, you can trust in and two, your family can trust in. I mean, one of my practices sure. probably, which goes against most agencies or agencies, if I'm coming to you to look to represent you, don't just talk to me. You need to talk to at least four or five other agents. And in those four or five conversations, you'll be able to come up with a judgment yourself on who do you think might have your best interest at heart. So don't just go for the first person, I would say. Okay, so if you look around more so on you feel like someone you can essentially trust. Yeah, like we talked about networking. You've got to have the conversations with people. Understood, understood. And how would one go about becoming an agent herself? Because I'm sure you know, um, Callum Hudson Adoy, his older brother manages him himself. He's yeah. on agent. So what would someone need to know from the ground up? Let's say they want to become an agent. What should they know, the guidelines, and what should they avoid? I think it's about your your, your network, really. Um, Callan hudson Adoy, uh, not many people know. His brother also played football. His brother played football to a very decent level. So he knows the industry inside out. So he's uh, he's already educated about how he can help his brother. Um, you know, So it's about having the network or the knowledge or the experience in the industry to be able to help other footballers. You know? A lot of the time when you get a bad agent is that they don't know anything. They've never been in football, never played football, never coached football, and they're just interested in making some money. So that's where you're probably going to have your, your problems going forward. And the most common problems going forward with agents, what would you say is in terms of people that want to start up? So what do you think they really just hit, you know, that crossroads where things are not working anymore? What's the common mistake they make? Uh, a common mistake or something that they face really is um, moving players um, for for money or for not the right footballing reasons, you know the you know the pro games littered with it where people have gone uh, for for a certain fee for a certain uh, amount of money. Five years later, they're not playing football yeah. anymore. You know, so I would always advise people to move for football reasons. Okay, understood, understood. So more benefit their own career long term, and then obviously things will follow, such as money. Yeah. And I wanted to go away from agency here a little bit and ask a common question that many people have in their mind. The issue with, well, I wouldn't say the issue, but the topic of housing is one that's very talked about. Of housing, for example, did you say? Housing, yeah, housing, yeah. So, for example, people that have a certain amount of wealth, maybe they go for a mortgage, thinking that's more beneficial than rent. Some people that rent, they say, I wish I could own a mortgage. Some people that can afford the house, sometimes they rent. So, what would you say is the most beneficial things that, um, the most beneficial thing to do? And what's the most common practice that the people of states actually go for? Is it they get a more rent, mortgage, or did they just own the house? All right. Honestly, I think that's that's probably relative, right? So if you've got capital right. to be able to invest in a property, um, logic suggests you should do that. But if you don't, you've got to rent until you can save up the or you can buy a property. So uh, to answer that question, is I think it's relative. You can't tell someone that hasn't got the means to buy a property, especially in somewhere like London, to go and buy a property, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And for one of the closing questions, can you just walk me through like a day in a life? So like... The, time you wake up, what you do when you wake up, up to obviously when you rest your head, go sleep. How the average day that I feel like for certain? Um, for me, I'm usually up at like six o'clock, 
Um, if I can make it to the gym or get a run in, I will try to do that. Um, depending on what sort of time zone or market I'm working in, um, I'll try to get ahead of the day. So um, I, I, I live in the States now. So when I get up, it's gone midday in London. So I'm kind of catching up with London um, and what's going on over here. But in the US, okay. um, it's phone calls, catching up with emails, um, getting abreast of what has happened the previous days or weeks in the transfer market or in the industry, um, and just trying to keep up with that, really. So essentially, the, your day will um, your day will encompass essentially checking up with news and being updated and being being sharp with everything that's happening in terms of the football world. You say. not football world, sorry, the sports world, the kind of world you say. Yeah, and uh, we're checking up with clients. What's, what's been the occurrences? Is there anybody that needs a move? Speaking to clubs, is there clubs looking for certain players in certain positions? Um, yeah, yeah, like scouting. Um, I honestly, I spend a lot of my time traveling um, to watch a lot of games. Sure. To watch a lot of games. So, like I said, in the US, I live oh. in um, I live in Ohio at the moment. So, I do a lot of traveling with like you know Ohio and Kentucky, Indianapolis um, to go and watch players. And to see if there's any players that out there that stand out for uh, that are ready for the next level. Okay, okay, okay. And just to go back to the agency one second for a little bit. So essentially, you see um, your agency um, occupation, the job that you do. Was yeah. it how you imagined before you started it, or was it exactly how the average person would think it is dealing with all these kind of people? Honestly, every day is different. And uh, the biggest question you get asked is, what does a typical deal or a transfer look like for a player? But the, the honest answer is every single one is different. Um, so okay. the, the, the day-to-day -day or, or, or working in it, is it how I imagined? No. Um, like I said, it's not like a typical nine-to-five because something might pop up that you need to do. Understood. And what would you say is the most bizarre or interesting day you've had in your, in your agency career? Well, you've been in career as well, because I know you played it yourself a little bit. The day that I had to fly to South Africa on, like, last minute's notice to get a deal over the line over there. Um, he was a Ugandan international called Ivan Bukenya, who uh, ended up signing oh, for right. the... What are they? I forget their name. They're going to kill me. They're the biggest team in South Africa. Uh, the Kaiser Chiefs. And what's the biggest sense of achievement that you felt in your entrepreneurial career? For me, it's every time I get a, help a player get a, like their first deal um, or their first professional contract or help them find a, a new club after being or not doing so well previously. Honestly, that's the biggest achievement for me. Understood. Um, just one more quick word of advice for the youth. Well, if someone that doesn't have much status, what's the best way to network with people that are already established? What do you think is the best way to network with folks and um, retain good communication and this kind of thing. Make yourself available. Put yourself in the positions and the places to to, to be seen and to be heard. Um, okay. Yeah, and like I said, try to be as professional and adaptable as possible. You know. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. I hope you after the interview, I can give you my number and conduct myself in a respectable way. Make myself very available and talk to you again sometime. Is that right? Yeah. Sounds good. The future. Appreciate. I'm sure Nathan Price and my number is sitting there smiling. I'm pretty sure. But yeah. We'll continue to do that and it was yeah. a very nice interview. <laughs> I appreciate talking to you and everything else. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks, man. Pleasure to be Thank here. You. you are now listening to Project XX Cast podcast series.